بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الحمد لله الذي هدانا لهذا وما كنا لنهتدي لولا أن هدانا الله سبحانك يا ربنا لا نحصي سناء عليك أنت كما أثنيت على نفسك نستغفرك ونتوب إليك وأفضل الصلاة وأتم التسليم على سيدنا وولانا وحبيبنا وقرة أعيننا محمد معلم الخير وقائم الخير ورسول الرحمة ونبي الرحمة ورسول الملاحم اللهم صل وسلم وبارك عليه وعلى آله الغر الميامين وأصحابه نجوم الدين ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين وعنا معهم برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم لا سهل إلا ما جعلته سهلا وأنت تجعل الحزن إذا شئت سهلا اللهم ألهمنا رشدنا وأعذنا من شرور أنفسنا أما بعد brothers and sisters I'm happy to be among you to share some of the ideas or knowledge about Al-Masih al-Dajjal which was termed as Al-Masih al-Dajjal in the prophetic statements Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam but I should highlight, uh, uh, make everyone aware that some of these they are facts mentioned by him Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and should be taken as uh, full submission with full submission you know, of all of these matters some of them may be felt as extraordinary or beyond our understanding or unbelievable and this is for us we are limited we cannot uh, do this but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the absolute and has the full ability to do whatever he wants to do subhanahu wa ta'ala so by this whenever we have any of these statements, you know, come from the messenger of Allah. Where we said that the messenger of Allah, because he delivers this message from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help us uh, to uh, get benefit, you know, of these facts, you know, when you have this massive chaotic matters, you know, take place, you know, on the earth. And for sure it's going to come one day. Uh, uh, this one of the major difference between Muslim and non-Muslim, the, the Muslim should be, they may not be, but they should be familiar with all of these matters, you know, because the Prophet ﷺ not only make them aware of it, rather he warned them about these signs, you know, to be ready and to uh, have the practical point. So I look at this uh, issue, not a matter of delivering some uh, knowledge to you or uh, give you a piece of history, even though this is a unique matter, you know, to give you the future history, not the past history. And all the historians, they speak about the past, you know. But uh, our Holy Quran and the Prophet وسلم, they speak about the future, you know. And up till now, after more than 1400 years, uh, we have observed, we have watched, sometimes we have lived some of those matter which mentioned by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or by the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the holy hadith and you are going to find it completely perfect the way it was described to the extent even if a, an observant of it tried to describe it is not going to be any way close or similar to the way it was described by the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and this is just to support our understanding and make our heart you know, much more open to hear what is the Prophet is going to tell us about the, these matters. And this is it's, uh, for Muslims in general, it's out of discussion. It's not a matter of discussing, discussing is this possible or not possible or this or that, since we have this unique experience with him وسلم, that he was the most truthful one. And uh, in his time, just I remind myself and some others that even in his time, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, whenever he speak about anything is coming in the future, non, not the believer in his time, the non-believer they used and tend to believe that is going to happen completely and exactly the way the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam spoke about it. Why? Because they have, they are not believers, but they have their experience with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam since his birth, that he never been liar you know, once in all of his life. And by this, 
Those matters has been mentioned in the hadith. This is the way I get benefit from it. Please don't try to adjust it. Don't, don't try to apply it to your time, you know, because these are pure facts, you know, given to you from the Prophet وسلم, and you should take it with full submission. I'll give you an example about it. In one hadith, the Prophet وسلم, described a certain type of women, they are kasiyat and ariyat. When you look, at this expression from him وسلم, and how the scholars before this time came how they, 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 they try to explain the meaning of it their, their explanation was not correct even though those people they are much more knowledgeable than us and those they are better, better and uh, they have better way of understanding the comments of the Prophet وسلم, even though they were not able to fully understand what's the meaning of it, you know, in the hadith of the Prophet Until it was shown up for us how the, you have those ugly dresses, you know, uncovered many portions, you know, of the, of the body, you know. And by this, even though we may not understand completely the meaning of certain of these words, you know, please don't make it materialistic, okay? If it's a way of having myself you know understand it you know this is is going to be limited to my mind to my ability to my understanding to much match it with the the facts that that i live in it but, but the facts that i live for it you know if we give exception of the religious facts you know the other facts that i live for them you know most of them they are doubtful and they are going to be changed uh, if i'm specialized in medicine you know i know in the history of medicine that nowadays we practice certain way of treating some diseases, you know, and we laugh at those having fun of those people who were 100 years ago, you know, they have, in our view, a lousy treatment, you know, of this disease or that disease. And in the same pattern, you are going to find those who come 100 years later, if there's a time, you know, to have 100 more years, more year, they are going to have the same fun, you know, about ourselves, you know, and the way we treated people, you know, in it. This Azan time, you see, inshallah, we'll call Azan, which is the best thing to hear. Inshallah, after that, you are going to find something described by the Prophet by five different description, and then you have the major science comes as I told you about the Tasmeen. This narrated by Tirmizi, narrated from Sayyidina Abu Huraira and Sayyidina Ali bin Abi Talib. Even though the, both of them, they are weak chains, you know, but we see it as uh, SubhanAllah happened to us. So here, five of the major, most of them, they are bad practice, you know, from our side. Uh, and if you want, this is not our subject, you know, but if you want me to mention them, you know, they are going to build up, you know, till they reach their end, you know, and when you have those 15 items reach their end, you are going to have what was described by the Prophet ﷺ by five different descriptions. So, I give you an example about it. When you consider zakah as a fine, nowadays, back in Syria, I received a lot of telephones asking me, is it okay to give my zakah to my son-in-law? Is it okay to give my zakah to my grandson? Is it okay? Yani, I feel from all of these telephones, you know, regardless of what the, the answer to it, you know, but I feel we are stingy to a, an extent. We don't want to give Allah had anything. Someone made nether. His rich person made nether that is going to slaughter one sheep, okay? And he was badly in need, you know, of this cure of the patient. Or, and when it happened, am I going to lose money? Don't tell me for Allah. I'm, I don't have confidence in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I want to feed my family. I'm not going to eat from it. Is it possible to have my children eat from it? We have a large population of people. 
No one care about them. No one want to pay anything in the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He wants all of those obligations and duties and compulsory to return back to him. If it's not to him personally, to one who is related to him, his son or his daughter or his grandson. And I don't care about the others. And when I consider the trust as a benefit I'm going to get, take you. I'm going to look good for you, okay, and deceive you, and get some money from you, as a trust, you trusted me for this money, and I'm going to spoil this money, I'm going to spend it for my luxury, not for the sake of Allah. When you have, the person is going to obey completely his wife, when you have the person is going to disobey completely his mother, when you have the person get his friend close to him and make his father far up away of him, and when you have the voices get loud in the mosques, that's mean no adab. And this, I see it back in our countries, I don't know about here, you know, you see, the person doesn't have his doesn't have any rule or any uh, effect in his house you know so he tried to practice his uh, being a man you know try to practice this in the mosque you know put the aircon up don't put your shoes here and, uh, and start shouting start louder and you see all that the, all the time you have all of those loud voices you know and uh, uh, mad practice and out of etiquette, you know, in what? Not in our houses. No one of us is going to accept any guest who come to his your house and tell you, listen, take this couch there and do this and turn the light off. No one is going to tolerate, but we have the full cut, you know, to practice it in the house of Allah. And then the Prophet gave the side of the, 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 the heads of all communities, they are be the worst. And in each subdivision, the hypocrites, they are going to be the most highly respected people. And then you have wine drank by many of the Muslims. And you have a lot of tunes and songs. Unfortunately, nowadays we have it even in the time of Nasheed. We apply all the musician, uh, musical, you know, instrument, you know, in this regard. And what else? Perhaps I. Uh, and uh, uh, some of this sign has. Uh, and the last time that the latest of this nation, they start to curse those who come before. Like nowadays, we hear a lot, you know, of cursing the companion, of cursing the famous scholars like Abi Hanifa, and Shafi, and Ahmad, and, and you name it, you know. And this is, yani, for me, it may sound that it reached the top, but I'm not quite sure about it. That's Allah al-Afiyah, may, whatever we see in this time, may, may not be in the top, you know, still in the middle, you know. And those signs is going to get more and more. And uh, from them, and the, 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 this person is going to be treated well, not because he is well person, because you are afraid of him. And these are the, the signs. He said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, then you should wait for, he, he gave five different descriptions, Rihan Hamra, red wind, Wazalzana, like earthquake, Wakazfan, like sheltering, uh, when you have change, you know, in the pattern of the creation uh, of the human being. When you have the hole, you know, large hole, you know, in the earth. In my interpretation, I may be completely wrong. The one which does these five descriptions is the atomic one. You don't have anything, you know, in this life, make this. Or some, there's something extraordinary in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, knowledge which we don't know. But in our 
standards, you know, we have the atomic bomb that does this. And this is what perhaps has been highlighted by the Prophet that after the fourth fitna, we are going to have the fana, the vanishing, okay, the vanish of the whole nation, most of the nations, you know, perhaps this is what has been described here in the other hadith, and then the Prophet spoke after this about the signs which are going to come one after another. There is specific hadith spe speaking about Syria in particular, that there is fitna in Syria, is going to start by a play of the boys. At this recent fitna, really it started by a play of boys. And then it became large fitna, and whenever we try to put it down in one side, it's going to erupt in another side, like the, the case, till they hear the voice that you Khalifa is so and so and Sayyidina Mahdi. Here, when you speak about Sayyidina Mahdi or Al Masih al Dajjal, you are speaking almost about the same time. You know. There is no significant gap or time between them. There is another hadith narrated in Tirmidhi, that one which is going to be quite quick, yeah, between one event and, and the other. The Prophet did not even use the word and or then, no, right away. One after another, he said that Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in this hadith, whenever you have modernized journalism, Bayt al Maqdis is modernized, you are going to have destruction of Medina al Munawwara. And whenever you have destruction of Medina al Munawwara, it's without whenever, you know, in the hadith, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, modernization of journalism is destruction of Medina. Destruction of Medina is Malham al-Kubra. That means the large fighting and killing, massive killing. The, then, al -malham al uh, without then, the, the massive fighting or killing is going to be the conquer of Constantinia, uh, uh, which we call nowadays Istanbul. And the conquer of Istanbul is without an again. The conquer of uh, Istanbul is Al-Masih al-Dajjal. And those events is going to take place one after another. So here, basically, these are the major signs. You may agree or disagree with me. Are we close to them or not? I feel personally that we are in them. Okay. How long it does it doesn't does it take? I don't know. Okay. I try to apply I mean, the, the, the cornerstone of my understanding is this hadith in Sunan Abi Dawood, which is authentic hadith about four fitness and how the Prophet described toward the end of the last one, you should wait for the Sih Dajjal tonight or tomorrow. Okay. And I feel what has been interpreted by that famous Indian Muslim scholar, I, I understand it the same way, we, uh, but for sure this, this per person, he passed away before Fitna to Duhayma, and, and even myself, I used to have wrong interpretation about Fitna to Duhayma. Now I'm quite convinced that we are in the phase of Fitna to Duhayma. How long is it going to take? I don't know, but I'm quite sure that at the end of it, we are going to be divided to, to, to both, uh, two different groups. One group is called by the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi al and the other group was called as Fustat al Or they use this term, I don't know how accurate, Muslim and liberal. Okay, and we have this, uh, you know, competition with each other, you know, and you hear the news, you know, much better than me, perhaps, in this regard, and, but I don't know for how long it's going to last, and after it, you should wait for the jihad. When you should wait for the jihad, as I said at the beginning of my talk, you should be ready for this. Ready to protect yourself from the fitna of Masih al-Dajjal. The Masih al-Dajjal is a human being. Human being giving a lot of power from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala giving him the authority to make the rain come or to stop the rain to have the green or not to have, it, uh, to have any green okay one of the person he will be killed by him by his command and he will be resurrected by him okay uh, he has with him what he said paradise and hellfire and the Prophet ﷺ instructed us, if we are given the choice, go to hellfire of him, okay? Because it's going to be paralyzed. Okay? And here, really, we are speaking about something which is beyond my imagination, okay? This extraordinary power given to him by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to test who? Firstly, to test Muslim. Who is really strong, confident in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, or he spent all of his life rely on small amount of money, some salary, some friends, or whatever, and tend to forget Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In my imagination, the one who has full confidence in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, even though he may not hear anything about the description of the message. Dajjal, I think he is going to be safe. Okay, why? Because this has been his practice all the time. And he's not going to change his practice at all. The one who heard a lot about Messiah Dajjal, if he did not apply to his practice, his confidence in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, his complete reliance on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I'm not sure that he's going to be successful. Even the Prophet ﷺ was not that certain about his people. He said, whenever you hear about him, about the Jal, don't go and see him. Okay? And he was not be He was not certain about the people of that time. For sure, say Nabakar and say Namar, if we, they did see him, you know, they are going to do as the successor said, you know, they are going to throw him you know, are a lie, you know, they are not going to believe him. But many of us, even though, so none of the audience, you know, but many of Muslim practitioners, you know, who doesn't have this full confidence in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they are going to be, they are going to fail the exam. And I told my people, you know, in Syria, really I told them, and what's going on now in Syria, it's a lesson from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. To tell us that nothing is beneficial for you is it except Allah Just imagine yourself here in this country, you know, if inshallah uh, will not happen to you, but this is a possibility. <coughs> if you are taken away of everything and left alone, how do you feel about it? We have many of those people, you know, back in Syria. By one moment, you know, he is left alone. No family, no business, no house, nothing. And this, I look at it, this is a lesson from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. To tell us, because we have been very bad slaves to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, very, very bad servant to Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave out of his mercy, he gave us this lesson to tell us, none is helpful, none is beneficial except Allah. I ask myself, and give this question to the other. I ask myself, is this the last lesson from Allah? Or we are going to have a lesson after that? If this is the last lesson that's been after that, we have the exam, we have the test. What is the exam? What, what is the test? test? The test is the Messiah al Okay, The one who did not get his benefit, his understanding from this lesson, is going to flunk the exam which is coming and Messiah Dish. The one who had his <coughs> benefit, you know, of this lesson, inshallah he is going to be successful in the taste of the Messiah Dish. So that's what I understand about the Messiah Dish. Uh, he has been described by many ahadiths of the Prophet I may mention some, you know, I'm sorry I did not prepare very well, you know, for this, you know, that's why I may not memorize all the ahadiths, you know, about al-Masih al-Dajjal, but basically he is very ugly shaped person, okay, and this is by itself, 
tell you through that Allah is the absolute. Okay, how great is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That this person has the full ability from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make you the most nice person, but for himself he cannot have he cannot have the ability to change this ugly face, you know, and this uh, gun eye, you know, and this hair, ugly hair and this you know, يعني, perhaps according to the description in the hadith, the ugliest first face ever to have is the face of a Sayyid Dajjal and he's the Lord. And those crazy people, those who are, you know, and, and this is, you know, an indirect way tells us, you know, about our reality nowadays, you know. You put in our back, you know, the most great, most, most valuable matters that we have. We put, I'm sorry to say this, you know, we put in our back, you know, the Holy Quran, we put the tradition of the Prophet we put our love of Allah, our love of the Prophet and we, we are interested in these ugly matters, you know. We are interested, you know, in living with people, you know, who are the ugliest, you know, and that even though yeah, I mean, physically they may have nice smell, but spiritually they have the worst smell. Physically they may have nice talking, but as described by the Prophet ﷺ, they have the skin of the sheep with the heart of the wolves. That was the Prophet ﷺ described it, and you name it. We enjoy our time here, okay? If you enjoy your time here, be careful because this is not going to last forever. It's very good, bad position to face Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This setting, okay, and it's much worse, you know, to reach the days of Al Masih al Dajjal and be fed, you know, by the taste of Al Masih al Dajjal. So I look at what's going on now as a lesson from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I'm not quite sure if this is the last lesson or we still have some other lessons, you know, from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But for sure, the test is coming one day and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to test it us by this very ugly. Yeah, you see, perhaps none of you accept this fact, you know. But many, they are going to go by it. This is the ugliest first face ever. Since I'm going to get benefit from him, I don't care. I'm going to sell my religion. I'm going to sell my principles. I'm going to sell everything, you know. And even this, I cannot even look at his face, you know. I get, I'm getting benefit of him. But, and this is the reality, you know, of this life. You know. The politician nowadays, they just speak about their uh, masalih, maslaha, yani their interest, you know, that. Uh, I get benefit from this, you know, regardless of how bad this is, you know, how ugly in this, this um, and all, uh, most, many of us, they admire this behavior, or would rather I behave the same behavior, you know, according to my limited ability that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave me, I'm going to have the same practice. I don't care about ugliness, I don't care about principles, I want the interest. And my interest, unfortunately, is very short look, you know. I look just for a few years. I don't look a little bit further when I get, I'm getting old, you know. Uh, according to the standards, you know, in such a country, when you get old, you are going to be left in the nursing home, you know, like useless person, you know. No one is going to look at you, and you, you don't mean anything for them, you know. Whereas, in, uh, in some Muslim country, up till now, you know, the elderly, they are going to be highly respected, you know. These are the wisdom people, you know. They are the righteous people. They have bright face, you know, because they spend their life, you know, worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and they will be highly respected. And this is, for me, tells us about what's going to come after it, okay? And each step is going to lead you to the coming step, you know. And now, we still have free time to think about it. In one time or one day, none of us is going to have any free time to think. You know. It's going to happen like one right after another, you know, and no one has the ability. I don't want you to make feel bad or to feel sad, but just I want to say, as the Prophet said, I'm warning you about Al-Dajjal, okay? I don't want to misinterpret 
المسيح الدجال I'm not going to say it's the dunya is dajjal I'm not going to say as some people say the TV is the dajjal uh, this is the dajjal I heard a lot of those uh, 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 misinterpretation you know of the dajjal no a dajjal is a creation is a human being uh, was observed by the Prophet ﷺ, was in the time of the Prophet ﷺ. Most scholars, they said, he is Ibn Sayyad. The one who is interested among you, go back and read about Ibn Sayyad. Ibn Sayyad was a boy, Jewish boy, you know, in the time of the Prophet ﷺ. And uh, he was highly suspected by many of the companions that this is Al-Masih al-Dajjal. And Sayyidina Abu al-Khattab was about to kill him. And they said, the Prophet said, if he is not the Masih al-Dajjal, it's not good to kill him. And if he's the Masih al-Dajjal, you are not the one who is, uh, uh, have the uh, honor uh, position of killing him. The one who has the honor of killing him, the truthful Masih. We have the fake Christ and we have the truthful Christ. Mm -hmm. And all of those matters, they are going to be connected to each other. The one who is going to kill Al-Masih al-Dajjal, the fake Christ, is the truthful Christ. And the Prophet ﷺ even specified a city that he is going to kill him at, which is called Lud. Al-Lud, now it's a very famous city, you know, in Palestine. Uh, and uh, Sayyidina Isa ibn Maryam, the, the real Christ, the truthful Christ is going to kill the fake Christ, you know, at that particular thing. And as you may see, when you say fake Christ and truthful Christ, try to broaden your thinking. In all standards, you have fake and truthful. We have fake Muslims and truthful Muslims. Okay. We have fake shuyukh and we have truthful shuyukh. You have fake beards and you have truthful beards. Okay? Even you have fake prophets. Musaylima. You have fake prophets. You have truthful prophets. And this is the test. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put us in this test. In all aspects, even in the most honorable position of any humankind, which is prophethood, you have fake one, and you have to lose for one. And you are under the test. Okay? And whenever any one of us try to fool himself, you know, about this fake life, as mentioned, you know, this life like a dream. And all of us, we look at the dream as what? Fake matter. Imam Ghazali said, if any one of us given that choice, you want to have a small silver coin, you know, in the awakening state, or you would like to have a golden coin, dinar, in the dreaming state, what's your answer would be? What do you want? For sure you want the small silver coin, you know, in the, in the awakening state. You don't, you are not interested in that one. Why? Because you consider the dreams as fake matter. It's not fake. I'm not here to tell you that the dream is fake. No. The dreams, it has its reality. And that's why it has been mentioned, you know, in the Holy Surah of the Quran, Surah Yusuf, about four different dreams, you know, mentioned in that Surah. And the Prophet Sallallahu used to uh, ask his people whenever he uh, performed Fajr prayer, he would turn his holy face to the pro uh, companion and uh, asking them, has anyone of you dreamt of anything tonight? Okay, the dreams, they are not fake, okay? But in our practice, look at them as fake, okay? So look at your life as a dream. And you are going to be waking up one day to the fact. So none of you will be like what has been described by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Some they will say, Rabbi Rji'u, please return me back. I'm going to improve myself, you know, improve my practice. No time of returning back, okay? You have been given uh, uh, many opportunities, you know, and very long time, you know, to prepare. And consider this setting and this gathering, you know, as one of the warning signs, you know, to try to get it. So what I look forward to, to have, to have all of us, including myself, and I seek the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide all of us, you know, 
to criticize ourselves. Okay, to criticize our behavior, to criticize our life, the way we live, and have better confidence. If you did not take any word from my words, just take the word to be fully confident in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, complete reliance on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and complete direction and righteousness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Physical paradise or is going to be show us on his right hand and left hand and a hell fire or it's going to be just to believe make them believe in him that he's a god and he's going to put you in a hell fire and hell, heaven so like to our, inshallah after us <laughs> فبعوث رحمة للعالمين وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين اللهم لا سهل إلا ما جعلته سهلا وأنت تجعل الحزن إذا شئت سهلا اللهم انفعنا بما علمتنا وعلمنا ما ينفعنا زلنا عنا وفقينا إذا علمتنا اللهم ألهمنا ولدنا وعدنا من شروع أنفسنا Before opening the stage for questions I'm going to highlight few points that I forgot to mention The first point which should be practical for all of us that the Prophet ﷺ instructed us to make seek, seek shelter from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala against al Masih al Dajjal, and this is to have it in the dua form, in prayer form, you know. And the Prophet ﷺ instructed us to have it uh, whenever, uh, before finishing the prayer, you know, to say, Allah, I will come in Adab al Qabr, I will come in Adab al Nar, I will come in the Mahi al Mamad, I will come in Shakri Fitnat al Masih al Dajjal. I'm too fast, I'm going to repeat them to, uh, slowly. Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min a'adhaab al-qabr, wa a'udhu bika min a'adhaab al-naq, wa a'udhu bika min fitnat al-mahya wa al-mamad, wa a'udhu bika min fitnat al-masih al-dajjal. And this is just to get free from yourself and have complete reliance on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala instructed us to do it frequently when he instructed us to say all the time إِيَّاكَ نَعْبُدُ وَإِيَّاكَ نَسْلَعِ We worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we seek him from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So these four isti'adah uh, has been mentioned by different chains to the Prophet to the extent that some of the scholars you know in Islam beyond the four mazhab they are called Zahiriya they consider them as compulsory because the Prophet has commanded them strongly you know according to their opinion the Zahiriya they consider this as compulsory of the prayer if you don't consider them as compulsory but really we are highly recommended to seek shelter and make isti'adha in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala of these four negative matters that we may uh, we may get exposed to one or more of these four negative matters or events that may happen to in our life or toward the end of our life or in some, uh, in some stages you know after our death you know and uh, uh, that's what I encourage everyone you know to keep up saying this or making dua by these four items uh, of these four items you know whenever you pray the prophet sallam, said that the most accepted dua whatever you have after your obligate, obligatory prayer and that's why you see how merciful is the prophet sallallahu when he instructed us to make it i'm going to repeat them Allahumma inna a'udhu bika min adab al-qabr wa a'udhu bika min adab al-nar wa a'udhu bika min fitnat al-mahya wa al-mamad wa a'udhu bika min fitnat al-masih al-dajjal and the best among us who feel while they are saying them that i have no ability i'm not sheikh i'm not knowledgeable i am not uh, good Muslim, I'm, not, I'm just feel myself free of all of those matters, and all of these matters they are in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala hands to protect me of having any of these negative events. And by this, you are going to take away the all trust and confidence in yourself. And by this way, you are going to have, inshallah, the full confidence in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the first point. The second point, 
about this fact, Al-Masih al-Dajjal. Who is Ya'ari? What type of fact is Al-Masih al-Dajjal? Okay. For sure, Al-Masih al-Dajjal is not mentioned in the Holy Quran thoroughly or uh, uh, by his name. No doubt about it. Okay. So we cannot call the one who deny this fact as Kafir. He is completely wrong, but he is not Kafir. Okay. Be careful about this matter. But on the other hand, we have a plenty of ahadith. When you collect all ahadith that in them the Prophet ﷺ mentioned and Masih al-Dajjal. I never counted them, you know, but I expect to have roughly 100 hadith, you know, speaking about this. And this is called by the scholars of hadith as mutawatir ma'amal. And this is one of the strongest hadiths. This is much stronger than the authentic hadith, okay? When we say mutawatir. What's the meaning of mutawatir? Tawatir in Arabic language, when you have everything come from different region, different aspect. You know? uh, for example, now in this setting, you know, if someone came and he said a car accident took place in the street, so and so. You feel this is high possibility. He may be right, he may be wrong. Then you have another person come from another area telling you about the same event. Here you are building up in your heart the accuracy of that news. You still under the probability till you reach a point you are certain about. The point of certainty, this is what's called by ulama al-hadith tawatu, okay? And here we are cer certain about, we have the certainty about al-Masih al-Dajjal. Why? Because this has been, when you, in different setting, in different statements, in different stories, you know, mentioned by the Prophet ﷺ, in different instructions, like the hadith I mentioned, perhaps this hadith Allah mini a'udhukin adab qabr and the fourth, four item. This is, I think, one time I collected them, you have more than 10 chains, you know, of this particular hadith. In particular, this hadith, you know. And for Masih al Dajjal, when you collect all that is about Masih al Dajjal, I expect, don't take my number, you know, I expect we may have roughly around 100 different chain, you know, to the Prophet about Masih al Dajjal, which make in our heart certainty that what the Prophet mentioned about it. Is accurate, okay? For sure, anything mentioned by the Prophet is accurate. And our problem by the chains, by the people who narrate this, okay, will have this high possibility, then high probability, because of the doubt of the narrator, not the doubt of the Prophet. In another word, anyone who hear it directly from the Prophet he has no doubt about it. No, we have some doubt. Why? Because the narrators may sometimes forget, may sometimes uh, get mistaken or whatever. When you have those different 100 chains speaking about same subject, about same name, about al Nasih al-Dajjal, this is going according to ulama al-Hadith and ulama al-Usul, those who are specialized in essentials of our Islamic laws and you name it, that is going to bring to our heart certainty about it. And the same as uh, mentioned by many authors, including uh, Shawkani and uh, another famous Indian scholar, Muslim scholar, they have letters, you know, mentioning that Al Mahdi, Sayyidina Al Mahdi, Al Masih al Dajjal, and the presence of Sayyidina Isa ibn Maryam toward the end of the time, all these three items, they are considered as what we call in Arabic Tawatur Ma'anabi. And now you know, you understand the meaning of Tawatur Ma'anabi. That means you have different settings of hadith, different stories of different stories, different statements from the Prophet about these three subjects. You know, for each one of these three subjects, you are feel complete, cer completely certain, you know, about this subject that you believe in it. Even though, again, I'm going to repeat, even though we have certainty about them, we are not going to call the one who doesn't believe in it as kafir, you know, because this is not mentioned in the Holy Quran. It's not part of what is necessarily 
uh, well known of our Islamic teaching. Okay, you got this point. Yani what I advise you, I advise all of you to believe in it. But in the meanwhile, I advise you not to call Catholic the one who doesn't believe. The last point, perhaps we will fill the, leave the stage for a question. Uh, there is one hadith narrated in Sahih Muslim by Nawaz ibn Sam'a that the Prophet threatened the, the people in Latina about the Masih al-Dajjal to the extent that they felt that as if he is in the palm tree surrounding Medina al See, and what I'm trying to say, the companion, even though, alhamdulillah, they were safe, you know, of Masih al-Dajjal, perhaps they were much more afraid and frightened of Masih al-Dajjal than ourselves. And this tells me, I don't know if you agree with me or not, this tells me how valuable and how uh, worse how does it work? You know, their belief, you know, they are, they have great confidence in their belief and they are quite afraid of losing their belief. We are, some of us, you know, in the opposite way. We don't care a lot, you know. We are fully confident, we are Muslims, you know, alhamdulillah, nothing is going to take us away, you know, and we are fully confident. Here, as I said at the beginning of my talk, anything which related to us is completely deficient. Anything which is related to Allah is completely perfect. Okay? So here, I would like myself and the Allah to move ourselves from our holds that we have you know, about those matters and have this complete confidence in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And in the same, in meanwhile, complete Fearing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is a gift given to us by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we hope that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not take it away from us. And this test may make it taken away from some of our hearts. We hope that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not take it away from our heart. And we, uh, we are for, fearful in the main, meanwhile that this may be taken away from us. The Prophet see how, how merciful and how uh, he worried a lot, you know, and concerned a lot about us when he said, In Yazhar wa ana fiqo fa ana hajiju. Wa in Yazhar wa lastu fiqo fa mu'un hajiju nafsi. Wallahu khalifati ala kulli muslim. And he, he concerned a lot about us, the Prophet. He said, If he's going to show up in my presence, I'm going to be the defendant. If he did show up and I am not available, you know, around you in the apparent way, everyone should be defendant of himself. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala khalifa. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to be like successor of me to take care of my people, you see. And we should have the same feeling, okay? We should be strong. When the Prophet said, Allah Khalifati ala kulli Muslim, we should feel the strength in our side, in our self. I don't feel strength, you know, in my belief. For sure, I am absolutely believer, you know. Uh, but I don't rely on my belief. I rely in what the Prophet said. He said, Allah Khalifati ala kulli Muslim. Allah, uh, uh, my, uh, my Lord, Allah is my successor, you know, to take care of all of Muslims, you know. And then let's live this confidence, you know, in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Live this close, tight relation with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Holy Quran, this should be the fact that never been absent, you know, of our mind. We are much closer to him than the aorta or the largest vessel you have in your chest or in your breast. 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, much closer to that. When you feel this, you know, this is going to give you the real support, okay? And by, by this, you are going to fully understand that the support you receive is from Allah, not from yourself. You are not strong, you are completely weak, you are completely poor, you are completely negligible, you know? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the absolute, and you will when you are going to go through this test or this exam, don't rely on your on, on, on your on your practice or whatever you know. Just rely completely on Allah Subhanahu wa Taala and have the full confidence in Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. Remember that the Prophet says, "Allah Khalifa Ta'ala Kulli Muslim." Remember to recite Surah Al-Kahf all the time, especially on Friday. Remember to seek shelter. From Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, from those four negative and bad uh, tests that may happen to any of us. So, in this hadith, Nawaz bin Sab'an, they were really fearful, and after they heard from the Prophet, they returned back, Oh Rasulullah, tell us more about the Messiah and the Shah. And he said, It's going to be all of a sudden to show up you know, between Iraq and Syria. Ya ibad Allah, fasbiru. Okay. O oh, slaves, servants of Allah, be patient. Okay? We lost a lot of our patience because this civilization made the life easy for us. Okay? And we should try to be patient. We should try to control ourselves. The Prophet said the first instruction he gave those people who were really frightened of Al Masih al Dajjal, Ya Ibad Allah, Fasbiru. I put in my mind, I'm going to face a lot of troubles, a lot of tests, a lot of miserable matters, you know. I should be patient, okay? And all of us as Muslims, we experience every year, you know, when you have months of Ramadan. How the one that the Muslim, how does he control himself? How, how he, he became a patient, you know, uh, for certain matters that is going to test him, to temptate him, you know, and is going to refrain them, you know, out of the uh, commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's why the Prophet said, you are going to achieve half of your patience by fasting. Okay. And in other words, me and you, all of us, we are in need of training our patience strength. And this is, I look at it as part of my preparation, my training to these days, if by the knowledge of Allah, I'm going to reach that stage. If I did not reach that stage, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saved me of it. For sure, patience is very good, you know, for the other stages, you know, for the trial of the grave, and for other matters, inshallah, none of us will go to hell fire, you know, we don't have any patience there, you know, but we should treat ourselves, we should train ourselves, we should have the control of patience, and the Prophet ﷺ described patience in another hadith, that this is the most, the broadest, and the widest uh, favor given to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to any slave. You need patience whenever you are rich or poor, whenever you are healthy or sick, whenever you are in good or bad position. In all of those paper, uh, stages, you need something to control, control yourself. You need the control. And this control has been summarized by the Prophet as patience. Ya ibad Allah, fasbir. And then he described the Dajjal that is going to spoil and destroy everything on right and left. And the uh, major destruction is what? The destruction of the belief of the people. And this is a major destructive matter that may take place. When he, uh, in other hadith, the Prophet ﷺ described the person who is fearful of the jam is going to tie his woman and his family, not afraid that they may follow the jam. You see to what extent, here to your 
on privacy, you are afraid, you are shaky that they, these people, they, those, these dearest people to you, they may be affected by the Sihah So, whatever you find beneficial in this lecture, you know, or as instruction, you should go back and tell your family about it, okay? Because the Prophet told us about those people in that time, they are going physically to die. They are people, you know, because they are fearful that they may follow the Messiah, the Shah. And this, but in direct way, you know, tells us how uh, severe and how dangerous is that test or that fitna of Messiah, the Shah. And here in, the, in this uh, hadith, the Prophet was describing, Asa Yamina wa Asa Shimana. And it's going to spoil and ha have this destructive action you know, all over the place. The only two places that are safe, you know, of al Masih al Dajjal, as mentioned in this hadith and other hadiths, they are Mecca and Medina. Okay? It's going to reach the destination of Medina, and the Medina is going to be shaky. And all Hippocratics, they are going to get out of Medina. And the Prophet called that day Yawm al Khalas, the day of relief. Inshallah, none of us will be hypocritic, you know. But according to those old description of hypocrisy, you know, anyone who gives preference to this life over the hereafter, preference to his interest over Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala instruction, he is hypocrite. Okay? And he, and even the people in Medina, those who are sincere inside, they are going to be saved of Masih al-Dajjal, but those who are not sincere, by this shaking of Medina to Nawara, okay, they are going to be you know, spilled out, you know, from Medina to you know. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam called it the day of relief of Medina. So here, for myself, this is a significant lesson from him, so that's a for myself and for the others. Are we eligible or not? Are we have this full confidence in Allah's prophet or not? If we are at that time in Medina and Nubur, are we fully lover and hold ourselves of Medina and Munawara? Uh, when we have this shakiness, you know, of whole Medina and Munawara, we are going to lose our confidence in Medina and Munawara and have better confidence in Masih and Dajjal. Okay? We should look at those matters. We are going to be tested by many of those physical matters to take our belief, to take away our certainty away and put the fake one as a substitute of it, you know, as the name of that person, the fake Christ. In the same way, is going to apply and adopt the fake, fakeness to all aspects of the matters, even his followers, you know, and even the assets of this life, you know, is going to be shown by this days from him. And he was asked, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, in the same hadith of Nawaz Sam'an, narrated by Muslim, uh, for how many days is going to stay on the earth? And the Prophet said, for 40 days. 40, 40 days. The first day is going to be equal to one year. The second day is going to be equal to one month. The third day is going to be equal to a week. And the rest of the days is going to be similar to new days. And this is by many interpreters, and they said, you are going to feel the first day as one year because a lot of <laughs> negative and uh, disastrous, you know, outcome is going to happen. You see, when anyone see one of his dearest person or, or one of the most trusted person to him or one of the most knowledgeable person, you know, in his sight, you know, he followed the Dajjal, really is going to be really shaky. Okay, and this is, is going to make this time very long to, for him. The other, they said, no, physically this is going, is going to be long, you know, but any, any, by any way, either this interpretation or the other interpretation, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala designated to make us, you know, reach that day, we should be too patient, you know, we should be too firm, you know, uh, uh, 
all of us, let me, let me, let me be so with you, all of us, try to find your direct relation with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because this is one of the most effect, effective way of protecting yourself. Regardless if you need these days or not, okay? Try to build your own relation with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Beside the Holy Quran. This for me, I look at it as a significant and unique way of building your relation with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay? And I don't, I am bad person, but I don't give excuse to any of you, okay? Arabic speaker and non-Arabic speaker. All of you, you are entitled, you are obliged. In my view, this is not, I'm not speaking here about halal and haram, but I look for anyone who wants to strengthen his relation with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he should go up over all over the whole Quran. With who? With Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the hadith of Qudsi, Ana jaleesu min zakar. When you make zikr of Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to sit with you. And the best thing to make zikr with Allah, to to have it in his own words, subhanahu wa ta'ala. How are we going to speak with the king of the kings, you know, or the lord of the lords? By his words. My words is not good, you know, not eligible, you know, for this setting, you know. In such a setting, nothing deserves, you know, speaking with except the words of Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And in another hadith, the Prophet, sallallahu considered the Holy Quran as invitation served by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Don't make tell, tell me, I highly respect Allah, I highly respect Ayat al Kursi, but we are, when you go to a very generous person in his invitation, what we are going to do, we are going to eat everything. Okay? In the same pattern, in the Holy Quran, you should expose your soul. Your soul is too hungry and too thirsty, you know. Expose this soul to all kind, if you mention this as a food here, all kinds of nutrition to the soul, you know, mentioned in the Holy Quran. And if it's any portion of the Quran not needed for you, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not reveal it to the Prophet. Okay? And this is. This is a book of the whole humanity, you know, has been summarized for you in these pages, you know. You want to come down again and say, and I'm sorry to tell you, I don't like this Pakistani habit, you know. They gather for khatim, they don't even recite khatim, they not just recite, Qul Allah, Ahad, Qul Where is the Quran? We took away all the Quran and we are left with these surahs. They are very great surahs, you know. But yourself, when you are invited to a human being, you know, invitation, and they tell you, just step aside, you are going just to look, you are not going to eat. Or you are only permitted to drink water or eat silent. How do you feel? The Prophet said, this is the invitation of Allah. And any inviter, he would like everyone to eat from his invitation. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, made this available for you. Perhaps it's not available for all of humankind, the way it's available for you, okay? And nowadays, as I look at the uh, computer and the programs there, you know, subhanAllah, we have nowadays many ways, you know, of getting over our problems, you know, pronunciation, recitation, uh, uh, understanding the meaning, and you name it, you know, yet, we feel everything is more important than that. <coughs> okay. And this, <coughs> I'm not going out my talk, you know, this is related to my talk, okay? I, I would like from myself, I am poor in it, and from everyone, you know, to strengthen his relation with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I see that, uh, how to strengthen it. Perhaps you have many ways, you know, of strengthening your relation with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, I look at two ways, two ways, you know, of strengthening your relation with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You may correct me if I'm wrong. The first one by keep reciting Quran. 
even one line per day to you get over the whole Quran. Okay? And then second thing, to have some night prayer. You see, really, uh, even though I'm not uh, inhabited here in this country, but I enjoy my time now, nowadays, you know, because I'm, I'm going to be forcefully, you know, wake up, you know, before fajr, fajr time, you know, and will have night prayer in a very easy way. And this is fair from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Look at it as this is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala calling you, stand up, my step, you know, and have some relation with me. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have no need of you. He will say, anyone needs anything to be given to him. Anyone who is poor, who wants any money. Anyone who is sick, who wants to be... See, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala exposes his <coughs> Himself, you know, so expose us to us, expose himself to us, you know, to, to ask him, you know, and we have very easy time. Why we give preference to all of these matters, you know, above Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? So again, please strengthen your the relation with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by these two matters, you know. You may have other ways, you know, I don't know about them, you know. I in, in, in encourage everyone to go by these two ways and in my a good opinion, if we love the Prophet this was his way. He was too eager, sallallahu to just convey one verse to, an, to a person, okay? And he is enthusiastic, you know, to deliver the message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to everyone, okay? To give, convey this verse, the, like, the, like the way you are interested, you know, in the schools of your children, you know, well, what type of school and how much you are, the, the, be interested, you know, in the, their rank, you know, in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala relation, you know, uh, if you miss this rank, let this, ha be, uh, let this happen to your, to your children, okay? And for not prayer, the Prophet sallallahu <laughs> out of his mercy, he told his companion, whenever you see me praying overnight, don't follow me. Because this is my beloved action to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and I'm going to stand for a long time. And out of his mercy, don't follow me because I'm going to stand for a long time, you know, and this would make you tired. And one time one companion said, I I had bad thought, you know, I was about to sit down and leave the Prophet the Prophet standing. Okay. So we may not be able to do it as such, but at least we should start. Please, please, please start your relation with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And for me, in my mind, this is the best protector for you from the Messiah and the Shah. Then he is going to be followed, Messiah and the Shah is going to be followed by Sayyidina Isa ibn Abim, as we said, and he's going to be killed by him. He's, uh, the Prophet sallam, said, don't ask me how, because I don't know how. He said, even if Sayyidina Isa ibn Maryam, he did not kill him by an arrow, he's going to be killed in Masih al-Dajjal by the smell of Sayyidina Isa. Okay? This smell should be too beautiful and too nice for us, but it's going to be poison for the Masih al-Dajjal. And this is why, the way I understand it, I may be right or wrong, okay? Yani here, before these days, we may have mixture. Okay? Yani I love this dunya, I love this dunya, I love this, I love that, okay? But at that point, no. Is it poison or perfume? You see? Is it poison or perfume? There is no something intermediate. And we are going to be in the same pattern, okay? I think even though Sayyidina Isa ibn Arma is not going to kill the follower of Rasulullah ibn Dajjal, but perhaps the smell of Sayyidina Isa is a poison for them, okay? And it's a perfume for the people who are uh, people of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, okay? And that's why we, uh, yani even uh, when we spoke about Fitnet and Duhayna, at the end of it, the Prophet said there is going to be full separation, full dist distinctive matter you know, of the hypocritic and the believers. And for me, this is a really warning sign, okay? Because Muslims, in general speaking, up till now, they tend to compromise. They tend to give up, okay? And I'm sorry to tell you, they showed me a video you know, about famous sheikh, 
who always attack the other Muslims and call them kafir, you know. And he was sharing the Christmas with some people, you know, and they, he said, these are our brothers. I asked myself, is this accepted by the Prophet ﷺ? To call his nation kafir. And call those who, who said that the Prophet is liar. You call him your brothers? You see? And you may not do it. But, but step by step we are practicing it. We have been pushed to it, you know, a lot. We have given up a lot of our assets. A lot of our uh, sacred matters that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made us responsible for it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us the responsibility of practicing and conveying it. And we have been really, most of us, including myself, we are really bad in showing it to the others. So, all those people, you know, who have this practice, they are threatened. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala called them in the Quran, they are deceivers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. See? They are deceivers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. To, to, how long I'm going to be deceptive, you know, and deceiving Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Is it time to hate myself and get out of my skin and try to find a better way? Even if I gave up these jewelry, jewelries that have been given to me by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, how long am I going to live? Five years, ten years, twenty, one hundred years? But after it, I'm going to return back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why am I speaking about this? Even if you are not in the time of Masih al-Jihad, just find a solution. It's very dirty, you know, to live all of our life, you know, just be, being deceptive to, the, to ourselves to and to others. To have very nice talks, you know, very nice speaking and very bad practice. And we are, I, I say it even back in my country, we are from inside defeated. We look at the Muslim as the best ever, you know, but inside ourselves we are defeated. We look at the other as if they are better than us. They are not by any measurement, you know, better than us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes the believer as They are going to put themselves down for the believer. Not call them kafir, and they are going to be in very honorable position, you know, and very proud of themselves in front of the And I'm sorry to tell you, most of us, perhaps including myself, we are in the opposite description. So, I think for this is enough, you know, and we have to stop here, you know, if there's any question, I'll try to answer it, you know, and so we'll start answering. He asked, uh, would you please repeat the question to be, to be accurate about it? Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. When it has been said in the Hadith of Allah that the Jal will have this power, that he will be able to and the rain clouds to they will rain. Similarly, you will have a paradise and hell. <laughs> what kind of hell and heaven you will have? Is it going to be physical or is it going to be in a worse that whoever is going to believe in him that he will put him in a heaven or hell? Okay, uh, I'm not quite sure to have the precise answer to this question. But in my interpretation, I'm going to say now, nowadays, even the Muslims, they are materialistic in their life. They tend to forget Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They rely on everything, you know, much more than Allah. Your question reminded me of Sayyidina Ibrahim. Sayyidina Ibrahim was thrown, as mentioned in the Quran, in a fire, which was very large one, you know. Not, don't think a fire that was set up like this because they throw him from an instrument, you know, from a, a rare, a, 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 from very far area because it was very large fire, you know, set up for him. In some narrations, Sayyidina Ibrahim said 
these days when I was in the fire was the most joyable days in my life. So here physically, when you look at that person, you know, in the, in the fire, anyone from outside will say, this is the most miserable person. The person who experienced it inside, he said, this was the most joyable days in my life, in all of my life. And this is what the Prophet ﷺ told us about the hellfire of the Masih al-Dajjal. He said, whoever given the choice to go to his paradise or, or to his hellfire, go to his hellfire because it's going to be paradise. Okay? And from outside, from people observing from outside, may be called hellfire. May say, how poor this person, you know, he had, and now he's burned, you know, badly in this fire, but he is going to have the most joyable hours, you know, in his life. You know, like Another question? I this. Shall one recite Quran from the start and complete it? Please try it even one time in your life. Okay? You as a Muslim, you know, you should have this good time, you know, of tasting the Quran. For sure. I'm not, I'm not telling you that you are going to be in paradise and you, you are going to have the most joyable time, you know, ever in your life. You may have hardship, you may have difficulties, you know, or whatever. But my good thoughts about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala look at his fellow or his person, you know, try to get closer to him. In my understanding, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to bring him closer and closer. Don't ask me how or why, I don't know, but I have full confidence in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala this regard. And just bypass me, the Prophet said, any inviter would like anyone to go, come to his invitation. And this is the invitation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yani even if you suffer a lot, you know, just try to fulfill the love of Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would like you to come to his invitation. And yani if nothing happened to you, at least you, you are now ready to uh, يعني match or fulfill what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants for me. And this is for me, this is the best position ever for any slave whenever he practice what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants from him. This is, I don't know, shall I mention it as a joker? I, I heard it from a famous sheikh, I never read it, you know, in hadith, that in the hereafter, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered the angels to get out from hellfire two persons. And then he ordered, and this is mentioned in the hadith, the first person, that he ordered him to go back to hellfire. And this person, when he go back to hellfire, he keep looking back, keep looking back. And Allah subhanahu wa said, return him back. Why are you looking back? He said, this is not my thought, you know, and you, when you get me out of hell, thought to go back to hell, go to heaven. Okay, this is mentioned in the hadith. The other one, I never read it, you know, but I heard it from some famous scholar. He said, the other one, when he is instructed to go back to hell, fire, is going to run, which is weird. You know, Nasallah al Afiya wa Salama. No one is going to run to hellfire, you know. He's going to be dragged and no, I want to, to, to. And this will run, run, running, start running, you know, to him. Go, come back. Why are you running? He said, Oh Allah, I spent all of my life going against you in commands, you know. I disobey you all the time. And now I'm going to disobey you. I'm going to fully obey, obey you and I'm going to run to hellfire. Go to heaven. Okay? And okay. you see here, and I look at myself, I keep, you know, disobeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
to what time I'm going to disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Till I reach that moment that that poor person, you know, start running to hellfire. No, inshallah, we'll have to correct our sin before it. <coughs> Is it okay to recite certain surah like the Yasin in the morning and certain surahs after each salah? It's okay if this is not going to occupy you of complete the whole khatim of the Holy Quran. I would like to see all of you know complete, not one khatim, many of the khatim of the Quran. We are fools, you know. We like to eat, drink, and sleep. And we are missing much more luxurious life. Sayyidina Osman ibn Affan said, Telling me and you, if we know the reality of the world of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we are not going to feel full of it. For sure, I'm going to tell you this and go and sleep, you know, after a while. But Sayyidina Osman al-Affan, who was above 80 years old, he spent the whole night behind Maqam Sayyidina Ibrahim, recited the whole Qur'an from the beginning to the end is above the head. When I read this, I feel something missing in myself. I am sick. That's why I have bitter taste. I enjoy mango and candies and whatever, you know, but I enjoy, I don't enjoy reciting Qur'an. That old man, Sayyidina Osman ibn Affan, he really enjoyed the Qur'an much more than my enjoyment, you know, about mango or uh, this feast or that food or, or you name it. And uh, when, when I have something missing inside myself, I should look, after, look around, you know, and try to find someone to tell me about what's missed, you know, inside myself. Uh, is there a specific time to read Surah Kaf on, uh, on Friday? Uh, you have from after Asr on uh, uh, Thursday till the Asr of Friday. And in some hadith, you are instructed to read it night and day of Friday. And perhaps, I don't know, I'm not quite sure about it, but that's what I feel. I'm not quite sure about it. Perhaps the best way to read it before the Khutbah of Jumu'ah start. Will the whole world be aware that the Dajjal is here? Perhaps I missed to say uh, the available and present world, they are going to be aware you know, of this because the Dajjal is very fast in his movement. And he's going to reach all destination, you know, with the exception of Mecca and Medina. And he sees the believers in journalism, as mentioned in some hadith. So by this, but uh, in my understanding, I understanding, I may be right or wrong, not all available countries nowadays they will be available. They will be destructed, you know, before the Messiah in Asia. Will it cause? commission and trouble or will people carry on living like normal? I don't know what you mean by normal. If you mean by normal to eat, drink and sleep, perhaps the best one will be those, the followers of Masih and Dajjal. They have the best food, the best way, the nicest way, you know, of sleeping and whatever, you know. But this is, we share it with the animals, you know. Whereas the Muslims, they are going to have hard time, shortage of food. And the Prophet ﷺ said, in many occasions, the tasbih and alhamdulillah, dhikrullah, is going to take over and uh, uh, being, uh, nourish them, you know, or give nutrition to them, you know, because they don't have food or whatever. Uh, I, I do not not fully understand what we mean by normal. You know. uh, for me, it sounds like extraordinary from both sides, you know, because uh, some, they are like animals, just eat, drink, and sleep, and the other one, they are like angels, you know, in their life. Other questions?
Yes. Okay, thank you. You reminded me because I forgot this was one of my points that I forgot. Masih al Dajjal, according to Hadith Tamim al Dari, which narrated in Sahih Muslim, he is available now. He is on an island on the earth. Don't tell me about the planets and the other. Uh, satellites you know to observe everything on the earth they are limited because they are human whenever we speak about human they are limited and this is a challenge to you, them to you know to find it and the prophet sallallahu specifically he said i think he is on the indian ocean this island okay and this is there's an island there is that battle of this is mentioned in the quran thoroughly by name that battle of the animal of the ground of the earth and the other one is al Masih al Dajjal is tied there. Okay. So here th these matters they are beyond our regular <coughs> rules that we have in this life. Okay. Because in the meanwhile we spoke about I don't know if you attended it, we spoke about Ibn Sayyad. This is a boy who used to live in the time of the Prophet وسلم, and when a companion later on swore that Ibn Sayyad is al Masih al Dajjal, someone said, Oh, you cannot swear, how come you are confident? He said, Because I did see Umar ibn Khattab swearing in front of the Prophet that this is al Masih al Dajjal, and the Prophet kept silent. Okay, and here at least this gives us a possibility that al Masih al Dajjal was available on the time of the Prophet he is available now okay and one time he is going to be untied you know and be shown to the people again we have okay in the meanwhile I'm going to answer one of this recent question dua fi khitam inshallah you make dua and you make dua yes what uh, I've actually got two questions and um, I'm not sure whether both of them are valid but the first one is I have heard that before the final Dajjal comes that there will be 30 fake Dajjals and if that's true how many have already came and um, my this one narration 30 and another one narration 70 okay and here I think it's too difficult, you know, to count them, you know, because from the death of the Prophet and even some of them, they show up during the life of the Prophet like Musaylima and Al-Aswad al anas So, to be honest with you, myself, I haven't counted them, you know, and uh, I don't know what's the standard of counting them. But I have full uh, uh, belief in that particular hadith that they are going to be shown up before the Messiah. Yes. And um, Sheikh, uh, do you know, um, just on that question, the brother said, um, I have also heard that um, one of the companions' uh, ship was led into um, an island, and on that island, the Jal was present. And was that in the time of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? That's right. I mean, this is uh, not only in the time of the Prophet. The Prophet ﷺ narrated it from Tamim al -Dab. This is, they call, Riwayatul uh, Akabiri an al -Asarif. When you have the senior, they narrate from the juniors, you know. If the Prophet ﷺ, on his holy pulpit, he said that Tamim al -Dab, he said so and so. Okay, so this has been approved by the Prophet ﷺ as narrated in Sahih Muslim. Yes. Okay. Another question here is there's a hadith that uh, the woman they are most of the followers of the jail. Yes, there is hadith, you know, that's why the other side should be more careful, you know, about those problems that we mentioned, you know, in this regard. Here we have long two questions. <laughs> way of giving da'wah to the blood relations people, you know, like brother, sister, and whatever, you know, to, to give them hidayah from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and guidance and make them one of the people of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I had 
had a dream that my son is asking me to read Surah Al-Fatiha and I read it, you know, during the day and she woke up or, or he woke up, you know, while she was still reading it. I'm not good interpreter, you know, of the dream, you know. This is very sacred knowledge, you know, mentioned as I've mentioned the Quran, Kareem, Surah Yusuf and other. Uh, you should have good interpreter you know, of the dreams. But for me, this inshallah good sign for you and for your son. And keep up with Iyaka Na'budu wa Iyaka Nasta'am. Other questions? Assalamu alaikum. Uh, Assalamu alaikum. A little bit louder, you want to make everyone be here. Assalamu alaikum. A um, couple of questions. Um, Inshallah, related to um, the Dajjal, uh, from what I understood, the Prophet ﷺ instructed us uh, to basically protect ourselves from the Dajjal once he's gone. So, my related question to that is, when he comes, is it better for the Muslims to try to stay away or to somehow engage him, A? And then the second question is... The first question, as we have been instructed by the Prophet ﷺ, don't even go to him. If they have the chance not to go to him, don't go. Don't, don't expose yourself, you know, because you don't know what's going to happen. Yeah. The second question is, um, you, you mentioned that, inshallah, the Dajjal, Imam Mahdi, Sayyidina Isa, they're all going to come almost at the same time. Maybe individually or collectively, what can the Muslim Ummah do to prepare for the other two? I spoke about it at the beginning, you know. Mm -hmm. I mean, when I would like to join Sayyid al Mahdi, but I asked myself, Am I ready? If Sayyid al Mahdi told me, Divorce your wife, am I ready to do it? If Sayyid al Mahdi to told me, We need your money, give up all of your wealth, am I ready to do it? If Sayyid al Mahdi told me, Send your children to so and so place, you know, am I ready to do it? Okay, and here, uh, for sure, I believe completely in Sayyidina Mahdi. I look forward to join him, you know, but I should prepare myself you know, for this. I should give preference to him over all of my assets that I have in this life. Recite Iyakana Abdu only during Salah or all the time. No point of reciting it at all, but I would like to remember it all the time and have it in my heart all the time. And for sure, we are going to recite it frequently you know, during your prayer and outside the prayer. Excuse me for any deficiencies, you know, I'm not a good way you know, to speak about these facts, you know. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give you the full support and the full assistance, you know, to get over all of our problems, you know, and all of our deficiencies, you know, and save all of us as the Prophet gave us the good news.